When I went on Big Brother, I was 23 years old. I was um, a 70s disco dancer, and my character was uh, called Chico Enportante, Teeth of Whiteness, Arse of Tightness. I auditioned in Manchester. I told them I was a 70s dancer. He said, dance for me then. So I basically just started dancing in front of a bunch of random people. You had to go in a little diary room and talk for about a minute why you should get on. Done that around about two and a half weeks before the show started. I got a random phone call from a, with a withheld number um, saying it was Big Brother, that they needed to see me down London. And, and then I thought, wow, this is the nitty gritty now. This, this, this could be serious, this. Then the next day, they sent out a producer to meet me and meet me family. This was on a Thursday night and I was actually doing the 70s disco show on the night. So the producer came to the show and like she kind of seen what this 70s disco was about. And then the next day they told me I was a housemate. And then I got hidden away in France for two weeks before the show started. Once I'd got to England, once I was near the, um, once I was in the hotel, I'll never forget. Like I was just walking around my hotel room. This was the Thursday night, and I was like, I'm actually going on Big Brother tomorrow. That is, and it was, just, it was just like, it was crazy because it was, it was a show that I'd, that I was such a huge fan of, and so to get, to think that I was going on it. It was a very, very surreal, surreal thing to do. I remember being in the taxi and I remember my heart was just going boom, 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 boom. But I remember telling the producers of the show, I'm going to be giving it the, the, the Billy Big <laughs> for the entrance. So I was like high-fiving the crowd, dancing, lying down on the floor, showboating, to the point where I got on the stage where I was getting booed. And I was like, oh no. Being a fan of the show, I was kind of also looking at it from a, from a fan's point of view. I was looking at all these characters. You had a guy who was naming himself Science, who was an extremely loud, loud character. There was Mary who came in as a witch with a broomstick. You had Kamal, you know, he was a guy who was dressed in women's clothing. And back then that was something, you know, it wasn't your everyday thing. There was McCausey, there was all these characters. So I was like, I was blown away to be honest. The Big Brother experience was very much how it is portrayed. Everything that happened in the Big Brother house happened organically, it happened naturally. The question that I still get asked probably the most is the, the Mikosi night. The amount of times I get what happened in the jacuzzi. I didn't know that she'd said that she was pregnant until I came out of the Big Brother house in, to, um, to get interviewed off Davina. And that was the first time I'd heard of Mikosi saying she was pregnant to me. So that, that initial like, what? Um, that was, yeah, that, that was crazy. The main kind of relationship um, that happened in the, in the show was mine and Craig's. It hadn't really been done where there was, a, there was a gay guy that actually fell in love with a straight guy. The public watching that unfold was extremely good TV. The friendship act actually ended up, um, it, it kind of took a, a bad, a bad turn, I would say. Um, it didn't end on good terms. I think he was a little bit bitter um, towards me um, after the show had ended. Um, and there was basically a couple of things that, that happened after the show um, and it resulted in him uh, sending me a really nasty text message. A really, a really bad one, um, which kind of like, which kind of shocked me, and I remember just thinking, "There's absolutely no way I'm having that, um, that in my life." So from that last text message that he sent me, I cut off ties, and there was no further contact. The Big Brother experience is a very, very e extreme 
taste of fame. I was this kind of just, you know, a run of the mill, normal young lad. I just lived in County Durham. I lived with my grandparents and my mum. Next thing, I'm in a house for three months and then I come out and I'm, you know, people know my name. It's hard to put into words what winning the show was like. It was absolutely epic. The Saturday, the day after, that was even, that was, that was crazy. There's about six, seven different agents wanting to sign me up to their agency. The very last agent that I'd, that I'd met, um, the Brick Brother Care team were saying, you should go with these guys. So I signed with them um, at about, round about dinner time on the Saturday. In the space of half an hour, they'd got me a OK exclusive photo shoot for 200K. And I was just like, what? So I got taken off to this mansion in London where I'd done this photo shoot in a, say, an hour interview and I'd got 200K. All my schoolmates were up in London. They were at the Big Brother house. So they were all staying in this hotel. So I remember leaving that house going, ringing them up going, lads, we are, we are out tonight. It was crazy because then it, it was like, like girls were coming to me and I was like, wow, this is, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna like this. So yeah, it was a real, like a real massive high. But having that, having that extreme taste of fame and having that huge high, there was a law to that. As much as it was an awesome experience and something that I absolutely wouldn't change, it also did come at a price. Slowly but surely the years passed by and then the work starts drying up. I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm ringing my agent going, what's happening? And they're kind of like, don't really have any answers for me. They, in a nutshell, basically, work's not coming in anymore. And then it got to a point where, actually, I wasn't doing anything. Still spending, but actually no money was coming in. I'd actually got into a really, really bad place. And it was my, it was getting to a point where I basically needed to get back into normal work. But I didn't want to go back into the normal world. I was so paranoid about what people would think of me. Because I and I and again, my, my my ego at the time was like, well, I've one big brother. I'm I'm you know I've won I've won big brother. I can't, people are going to laugh at me if I have to go back to if I go back to work. So it, it got to a, a really a really I got into a really really bad place um, where I'd I you know I turned you know I was going out all the time. I was trying to kind of like I was. Me, I was going out all the time and I was trying to kind of, that was taking me away from what I was really feeling and, and my real reality. Just a horrendous, horrendous dark place. L luckily enough, um, I had like a fighting spirit and I had a supportive family and a supportive friends um, and I had the self-awareness of uh, I needed a change up and I need to get back into, I need to basically get, I need to dust myself off, I need to drop the ego, I need, uh, I need to realise no one, no one gives a shit what I do. And I kind of basically got back into hairdressing. Once I'd kind of started doing the right things, my life started building momentum again. I ended up meeting my now wife. I've got a beautiful son now. Then I had this idea of, um, having a barber's in a bar, a real unique concept. I built, I've built this uh, Mr. Hutton brand. N and now I've actually got to the point where I am actually talking about men's mental health and how to get through being in a really dark place. And I'm able to share my story now and I've, I've been able to, to share that story in a, in a positive light in, in, in helping people where, to the point now where I do, I'm a guest speaker on men's mental health and I talk about it and it's something that I'm really passionate about trying to tackle this problem. My life is absolutely amazing and um, it's the best it's ever been because uh, I brought a little baby into the world, my son, uh, Cruz, Cruz Arthur Hutton. Um, I've got an amazing wife, Sophie, um, but 
in reflection, no regrets really, just uh, just the an awesome life experience. That's something that I'll that I'll never never forget.